Aleichem. Today, Daf Yomi is Baba Basra, Daf Tzadi, Tess, Baba Basra, 99. What a beautiful Daf we have in front of us. Says the Gemara. We're going to start, actually. Um, let's start on the uh, bottom of Tzadi Chesam Abiz, on the bottom of 98B, four lines from the bottom. So because we had been discussing the Heichal, the dimensions of the base of Mikdash, so for this reason... And we had used the dimension of the base of Mikdash as a way of telling us the uh, actual. Um, we had used the dimensions of the base of Mikdash as a way of telling us the uh, the dimensions of a regular house. So for this reason, the Gemara goes into a little bit of agadita, a very beautiful agadita about the base of Mikdash. Rabbi Chanina nafakul kiryas. Rabbi Chanina went out to the city, which is itself strange. What is it? Why is it telling us that? But anyway, he says he went out to the cities, and the people in the cities asked him this question. Ramaway Kraya Adadi, they threw two verses against him, meaning they asked a contradiction. It says in one of the Psukim in Moachim about the base of of Shlomo, Rabbi says, Sherbona Amel Shlomo Hashem, Shishim Ama Arko, Asrim Rachpo, Shloshim Ama Koma. So the temple, the base of Mikdash that Shlomo Amel built was, was 60 Amos tall. 20 amos wide, 30 amos high. That's basically the base of Mikdash that Shlomo HaMelech was. According to this, it, it was, it was, uh, the height was 30 amos. And then it says, of Neadvir, and in front of the Holy of Holies, Esrim Orech, Esrim HaMarucha, Esrim HaMakomas. That says the height was uh, was 20 amos. So why is, why is the height of the Holy of Holies different than the height of the rest of the base of Mikdash? It's connected. You would presume it to be the same. So Amru Sarbachanina said to the people of the cities, this is not a contradiction. Kikachashiv, he says, Misvasa Kulimu says when they count the 20 amos of the Kodesh Kadash, and really the Kodesh Kadash and the ceiling was 30 amos from the ground. But but this pasuk in Shlomo Amel, uh, this pasuk in Malachim was counting from the top of the kruvim. Now the kruvim were not were not on the top of the aron. That was the aron that Moshe Rabbeinu with Betzal built. That the kruvim were on top of the aron. But the Rashbam tells us that the kruvim of Shlomo Amel were on the standing on the ground, and so they went up ten amos high from the ground, and so from the top of those kruvim were twenty amos. So then the Gemara says, "My Kamashmon, what is this in fact telling us?" Baruch Atah Adina and Mocham Shakol Me Eved Baruch. What is this in fact telling us? Meaning to say, meaning to say, Rashbam says, "Why do we need to count from the top of the Kruvim? What is that? What's the Chiddush here? Why do we even care?" So the Gemara says, "A Kamashmon Lamata Kol It's telling us that the that the space above the Kruvim is like the space below, or the space below is like the space above. Mala, mala, just like above the Kruvim, it's just air space. There's nothing there. 20 amas from the top of the Kruvim to the roof, and there's nothing there. Afama, or to the ceiling. Aflamata, So to below the Kruvim, there is nothing there. Meaning to say the Kruvim were suspended in the air. They took up no space. It was magical. And Messiah or Rabbi Levi, this is actually support for Rabbi Levi's position. Number Rabbi Levi, Vitema Rabbi Yochanan, Dovers and Mesoros be Adenome Avosenu. This is a tradition in our, we, this matter is a tradition in our hands from our forefathers. Makom Aronu Kruvim, Eno Minamida, that the space of the ark and the Kruvim is actually not part of the measurements, meaning they took up no space. The ark and the Kruvim took up no space at all. And the Gemara is about to prove this from a Brisa. But what does it mean that the Ark and the Kruvim took up no space? I was thinking about it like this. That on the one hand, it means literally they actually didn't take up any physical space. It was miraculous. But on the other hand, that thing was like this. The Ark represents Torah study. Kruvim represents love, relationship, as we'll see in a moment in the Gemara. And some t- people say, oh, I don't have any time for Torah study. I have no time to study Torah. No, the Torah study doesn't take enum and amida. It doesn't take up any space in our life. The Torah study does not take up any space. 
it, it's, it just adds time to our life. You can never say, I don't have enough time for Torah because the more you study Torah, you'll actually discover the more time you have to do the things that are important. And the Gemara supports this from a Bryce that the, that the Ark and the Kruvim don't, and Kruvim represents love. The more we give out love to the people we love, the more time we have. It doesn't actually take up any of our time. Tanya Namiach, indeed we have a Bryce that say this, says this. Aaron Shasa Moshe, Yeshlo Revach, Eser Amos, Lakol Ruach. The Ark that Moshe made has a space that went 10 amos in every direction. And so that's going to be a big problem because if you have 10 amos in every direction, the whole dimensions of the Holy of Holies were that it was, uh, it says, Esram Amma Orach, Esram Amma Rocha, the Esram Amma Komoso. It was 20 amos by 20 amos. Well, if that's the case, where would the ark stand? So it must have not taken up any space. And also the Kruvim B'nai and Amara B'nai in the name of Amar Shmuel, Kruvim and Nesayin Omdim. The Kruvim were standing miraculously. How so? As it says in, in, in Malachim about the base of Mikdash, it says that the one wing of the Kruvim was five Amos. The other wing was, the other wing was five, uh, was five, um, was five Amos. And it was 10 amos from one wingtip to the other wingtip. So therefore, since it was 10 amos from one wingtip to the other wingtip, that's basically... Uh, so each kruvim had 10 wing, uh, ten amos. Each kruv was taking up 10 amos. And since it was only 20 amos wide, therefore it's going to tell us now, where were the Kruvim themselves standing? If their wings were 20 amos when they spread out, so they must not be taking up any space. So the Gemara says, well, that's not necessarily the case. Because the Gemara is asking, so where was their body standing? So it was miraculously standing. If the wings took up 20 amos, where was the body? So the Gemara is going to ask five questions about this. What are you talking about? Dilma bolting and Maybe the wings were on the backs of the Kruvim, like chickens, like chickens have the wings on their backs, and meaning to say maybe their body was obscured underneath the wings. So it's not necessarily the case that the body was, that the wings extended from the body. Maybe they were inside the body. And so that's the first question. Maybe each one was not opposite the other one, meaning to say, meaning to say what maybe one was standing on one side of the Aron, uh, and the uh, on this side, and the other one was next to the wall, and the on the other one was standing uh, a little bit away from the wall, meaning to say they, they might not have been standing facing each other. So that's the that's the second uh, that's the question that Rav is asking. Maybe they weren't in one line. One was next to the ark, next to the wall, and the second one was standing a little bit behind the wall. Or after the war. Meaning to say they weren't in one line. Maybe they were diagonal. How do you know where they were standing? It's like similar to the first question. And It's possible that the Holy of Holies was, was only 20 amos at the top, but at the bottom, it was wider than 20 amos. And Maska for Rapapa, Vidilma make of Havikai for your dayu. And, and so then Rav Papa says, but maybe the wings of the of the Kruvim were not completely straight. Maybe they were bent. Meaning when they were straight, they were 20 amos, but maybe they were bent. It's possible that maybe the wings were one on top of the other. And so therefore there was extra space. So it's not necessarily the case. All these questions were asked. So Kate said, how are the Kruvim standing? Here's a very beautiful Gemara. How are the Kruvim standing? So Rabbi Yochan, Rabbi Lazar, Chadamar Pneim, Isha Lachem. Each Kruv faced the other one. Chadamar Pneim were biased. The other one said that they faced the sanctuary, the Hechel, the main sanctuary of the base of Mikdash. Chadamar Pneim, Isha Lachem. According to one who says that they each faced the other, or Haksiv, Upneim were biased. It says that they faced the bias. It says that in the in in Debre Yamim, Upneim were biased. So. So what? So the Gemara says it's not difficulty. 
Come as much as Israel owes him its own shamakum. When the Jewish people, one is when the Jewish people do the will of God, then they face each other. Come as much as Israel owes him its own shamakum. And when they don't do the will of God, then they face the base of Mikdash. So, Rashbam explains when they when they when they're doing the will of God, they turn towards each other because it's an example of the love of male and female who love each other, and that's in a simon that Hashem loves the Jewish people. And so that's how they started in order uh, to demonstrate that the Jewish people are beloved like God, like a, like a man and a woman in love. So that's how much God loves the Jewish people. And 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 when they don't, and when they're not doing the will of God, then they prove and face the sanctuary. According to the one who says that the face is towards the sanctuary, what about the fact that it says each one faces his brother? Where it says it means the mitzah dide atzude. It means that it means that they were a little bit facing the sanctuary and a, fit, a little bit facing each other. Like a Rashbam explains, like a person who speaks to his friend, and he and he turns his head to another side. So, so that's what it means. The Tanya unkos ager amar kruvim maset zatuim. The kruvim are. This is a pasuk about the Kruvim and Divrei Yavim, and this means that the Kruvim are like children, like Rashi says in Sukkah, like the Rambam Sukkah says, Kruv is Karavya. It means a child. The Kruv means like Karavya, like a child, meaning the children who leave their or their teacher, and it means they like when you when you leave your teacher, you don't turn your back, and then when you go, you walk backwards, looking at him from the side. Like a, teacher, like a student who leaves his teacher. So now the Mishra says, We're on to the next topic. Because somebody who has a well that is on the property of his friend, person who has a well that's found in the courtyard uh, and so therefore he has no ability to get to this courtyard if he, he doesn't have an easement to get there. He has to walk through the house. Then the owner of the well, <laughs> then the owner of the well is allowed to go there in the time when the other people go in. <laughs> Meaning he's only allowed to go during the hours of the day that p- people typically go there because that's where uh, that's where you typically use the well. And he's not allowed to make the person, you know, go there in the middle of the night and make him open up the door so he can get to his well. And he's not allowed to take his animal through the house and water from the well. He has to water the well. He has to take up the water and fill up the water and feed the animal outside. And the owner of the pig can make for himself a lock to close up the well so that the owner can uses water without permission. And the owner of the house can make for himself a lock to lock the, to, they can each have their own lock so that the owner of the pit can't go there whenever he wants when the owner of the, when he's not in the house. So each one needs the friend. Each one needs the other person to be there. Hold on, this guy keeps calling me. Okay, so now, so now the Gemara says, "Posachas lahecha." What does that mean? Where do you need the Where do you need the lock? So I'm Rabbi Yochanan Shneim Wabor. Both of the locks are on uh, uh, are there for the well to lock the well. Bishlam Abal Abor Bailish Demuri Mai Debori. It makes sense that the owner of the well needs the lock to protect the water of the well, so the other person doesn't take it. Al Abal Abayis Lamalei. Why does the owner of the house need a lock? What is he going to do with it? I'm Rabbi Lazar, Mishim Chashad Ishto, because he's worried that people will see the owner of the well will go into the house of the will go into the house whenever he wants, even when his wife, even when he's not at home, and so people will start to talk about that, and they'll start to say bad rumors about the owner of the house, and they'll say he's violating a sin, and therefore they establish that the owner of the house can lock up the well. And so therefore, he can only go there when he's there too, so that they don't start rumors about him and his wife. So the next Mishnah, so somebody has a garden behind his own garden. Again, it's the same idea. 
that your garden is behind the other person's garden. So you need to go through his garden to get to yours. You can go in when people go in, and you go out when people go out. And you're, the owner of the garden, the inner garden, is not allowed to bring into his garden, through his friend's garden, merchants that want to buy his vegetables because since uh, because we're going to say they only, he only has permission for himself to go through and not the merchants. And and also, well, you can't me tocha or tochsa da'acharis. He's not allowed to use his garden as a shortcut to get into another field. Va'achitzon zoreas aderach, and the person who's in the outer garden, he's allowed to plant vegetables on the path that his friend walks through, even though it's going to cause his friend to be a little bit annoyed because he's got a little bit more of a headache to walk through. Because even though he gives his friend permission to walk through, nevertheless, it's his. He has an, a right to walk through, but the guy on the outside still owns it. But if the court, if the Bezdin gives the guy on the inside a path from the side to get there, Midashneim, and both of them agree to it, then Nechnas Meshashu, Rotsa, Vyotsa, Meshashu, Rotsa, Machnis, Otochan, Tagarin, then he's allowed to go in whenever he wants and he can bring merchants in because they both agreed and the court gave it to him. But still, but still, he's not allowed to go into it from another field. He's not allowed to go into it from another field. He's not allowed to use it to go into another field. Um is going to have to explain that. And And then under those circumstances, uh, since it's designated just for walking, neither one can plant it. So I'm Rabbi Uda Shmuel. So since our Mishnah was talking about the rights um, that a person has in the in the garden of his friend, the Gemara is going to talk about a guy who purchased a place in the field of his friend. The he has the right to irrigate, basically. I'm Rabbi Uda Shmuel. I'm a base ashlochem. So somebody who says to his friend. If you have a field that requires irrigation, it's not doesn't rely on rainwater. I I'm selling you a field that requires irrigation, and basically what he's saying is, I want to sell you a place in my field so you can dig a a trench uh, for irrigating uh, uh, your field, and you can go through my field. No single stay amosotocha. So then the seller gives the person who's digging it. Uh, uh, a width of two trenches because that's the width that you need to to water your field. The ama mikan mikan And aside from this, aside from the trench of two amos, uh, he has on either side of it another ama, so that if uh, basically if the walls get messed up, he can fix them through the earth that he takes from those other amos. So altogether, four amos. Uh, but if he says to his friend, an ama base akilon, I need an ama for like a pond, a small pond to water the animals and to wash uh, my clothes. Uh, then it's a trench, it's one ama long. And on each side, a half ama. And those banks, mizoram, those banks that are on the side, who gets to plant them? Rabbi Yehuda Amar Shmuel Bala Sadezorim. The owner of the field gets them. Rabbi Yehuda Amar Shmuel Bala Sadez Notam. He can plant trees there. Man Amar Zorim, the one who says he can plant like seeds there. Kolshkin Notam. For sure he can plant trees there. Because the, the roots from the trees are it's even bigger. Uh, basically they go down deeper and then they go onto the side. And we don't have to be concerned and it's going to ruin the bakes. So Man Amar Notam, the one who says you can plant saplings there. Of Ozorim, well, we can't plant uh, seeds there because the seeds basically will make little, they could damage the ground and and it could cause problems for the pond. Let's say a person who has a, a pond and it's going into the field of his friend and the banks fell down and there's not enough earth uh, to fix it. Mitakna me osa sada. The owner of the pond can go in and fix it from that field. Because we know that's where the soil ended up. It went back into the field. 
Mask it for Rav Papa. So Rav Papa challenges. Blame away. Why did, so the owner of the field can say to the owner of the pond, your water, that's what washed uh, away the earth. Not, not It didn't go back into my field. Your water washed it away. So that's not a good argument. Elmer Papa, Shamanaz can keep a lot No, that was the condition that he had when he rented, when he built it, was that if it, that if the walls break down, I could go back into your field to get more earth. So, so now this is actually, uh, the next mission is actually would be relevant if it was a halacha. A lot of people have shortcuts. People go through like backyards of people to get to their shuls. They don't want to walk too long. And then the guys get annoyed after a while. The people who have that backyard, they try to close it. I've seen that a few different times in my life. Well, this is the case. Mishai said, Derech HaRabim Watosadeo. Somebody has that people were walking, like the path that people were walking through his field. Netala, that's, so he wants to kick them off. He says, you can't walk it. Because, so, so, says he can't do it. So he takes away that path and he gives him a path on the side. So he can't do that. What he, the new path, he's given away and he didn't get, and, and the first path, he can't take it. So Gemara's going to have to explain why. Basically, if you have a path for one person, the, the typical path is four amos. So if somebody sells to his friend a path in his field, so like an easement, he's giving him four amos. But if he gives the community, he's giving it six amos. If the king wants to take, basically, what's that called again? Oh, blanking on it. Eminent domain. The king wants to take eminent domain. He can take as much as he wants. Let's say you sell to your friend a, a pathway to the grave. Uh, in Lashir, there's no there's no size either. Amamad, so um, basically, you sell to your friend an area to uh, basically this is mama. This is a custom that's connected to the escorting of the dead body, as Gemara is going to discuss. The judges of Tzipori said you have to give a area that is that you could plant for carbon. And this is the daf yomi for Erev Rosh Hashanah, and God willing, it's the last daf of the year. So the last daf of the year tells us that there's no limit to a Torah study. No limit to Torah study. Baruch Hashem, we manage with the help of Hashem, do every single daf, every single daf together, that's 354 dafim. Uh, other Shaney, we did another 308 uh, more. I don't know exactly how many days there were this year, maybe 383 days. Baruch Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, for giving us this opportunity to study together this entire year of Dapim and maybe study next year and next year. And God willing, finish the whole Shas together. Shkoyach. All right, have a good night. Good night. Good night, good night, good night. And Batal shares at eight tonight. Thank you. Shkoyach.